Hello students, my name is Priyanka and I am your digital mentor. Today I am here to start with the chapter 15 that is some people never die. So let's kick start. Trade flourished between India and the other countries listed in the table. Use your atlas to fill in the table. Upon becoming king in 1481, John II of Portugal needed to build up the royal treasury. He realized that expansion of Portugal's trade and commerce was the right step in that direction. He became eager to capture the highly profitable spice trade in Asia, especially India. For this objective, he chose Vasco da Gama to find a sea route to Asia sailing around the African continent. Arrival of Vasco da Gama In 1497, King Manuel caused Vasco da Gama to lead a Portuguese fleet to India in search of a sea route from Western Europe to the East. Routing the Cape of Good Hope at Africa's southern tip, Vasco da Gama crossed the Indian Ocean and reached the coast of India at Calicut in May 1498. At that time, the Muslim had a monopoly of trade with India and other Eastern nations. Due to conflicts with the Muslim traders and the local Hindu population, Vasco da Gama returned to Portugal. Next time, a much larger fleet commanded by Pedro Alvarez Cabral left Portugal to capitalize on Vasco da Gama's discoveries and secure a trading post for Portugal. Next time, a much larger fleet commanded by Pedro Alvarez Cabral left Portugal to capitalize on Vasco da Gama's discoveries and secure a trading post for Portugal. After burning 10 Muslim cargo ships and killing nearly 600 sailors, he moved on to Cochin, where he established the first Portuguese trading post in India. Rise of Vasco da Gama In 1502, Vasco da Gama was made in charge of another Indian expedition. This time, he used force to reach an agreement with Calicut's ruler. For the next 20 years, Vasco da Gama continued to advise Portuguese ruler on Indian affairs. In 1524, he was appointed as Portuguese Viceroy in India. In December 1524, he died in Cochin, British East Indian Company. Landing of Vasco da Gama opened a new phase in India's commercial history. Other European countries like France, Holland and England became eager to establish trade centers in India. The European countries fought among the themselves for supremacy and monopoly of trade in India. After a long struggle, the British succeeded in ousting others from India and then established here the British East India Company. The company started its trade from Surat. Soon it expanded trade to the whole of India with the permission of Mughal Emperor Jahangir. In order to consolidate its position, the company raised an army of its own in India. Seeds of British Raj in India The seeds of British Raj in India were sown by Robert Clive, which were well taken care of by Wellesley and Delosi. Battle of Plassey the company wanted to have complete hold over Bengal in order to control South Asia. Clive realized that the best way to secure company's overall interest in India was to replace Siraj Uddola, the Nawab of Bengal, with the puppet Nawab Mir Jafar. On June 23, 1757, a battle took place between British East India Company and Siraj Dola. The battle ended in the victory of the company. Mir Jafar played the role of a traitor in the defeat of Siraj Dola. The British victory under Robert Clive laid the foundation of the British Raj in India. Subsidiary Alliance The subsidiary alliance plan was introduced by Lord Wellesley for British expansion in India. 
According to this alliance, Indian rulers were not allowed to have their own independent armed force. They were to be protected by the company. For it, they had to pay for the maintenance of the subsidiary forces of the company. If the Indian rulers failed to make the payment, part of their territory was taken away by the company as a penalty. For example, the ruler of Awadh was forced to give half of his territory to the company in 1801. Doctrine of Lapse Doctrine of Lapse was an imperialist annexation policy of the British East Indian Company to capture more Indian states. It was implemented by Lord Delosy. According to this policy, if the ruler of a protected state died without a natural heir, the state authority passed to the British East Indian Company. The Freedom Struggle of 1857, the cession of parts of their territories to the British by the rulers of Awadh and Hyderabad raised many eyebrows against the British in India. Moreover, the annexation of states like Satara 1848, Sambalpur 1849, Nagpur 1854 and Jhasi 1853 added fuel to the fire. These and some other factors discussed hereafter led to the Great Revolt against the British in 1857. Causes of the Great Revolt The main cause of the Great Revolt were as follow. Economic causes The peasants suffered due to high revenue demands and the strict revenue collection policy. They were compelled to grow Indian crops like cotton and indigo causing famine conditions due to shortage of food grain crops. Their crops were purchased at very low prices. It kept them always from hand to mouth. Artisans and craftsmen were ruined by a large scale arrival of cheap British manufactured goods into India. It made their handmade goods uneconomical to produce. Weavers and artisans were ruined on this account. Political causes. The vigorous application of the policies of subsidiary alliance and doctrine of lapse angered the ruling sections of the society. Rani Lakshmi Bai and Nana Saheb became better enemies of the British and led to the revolt in their respective territories. Religious causes, that is the second one. A major cause of the outbreak of the revolt was the fear among people that British government was bent upon to destroy their religion and convert them into Christianity. The policy of taxing lands belonging to temples and mosques lent further fire to their anger. Third, that is military causes. About 80% of the total British troops in India were Indians. The Indian sepoys were looked upon as inferior beings and hated by their British officers. They were paid much less than the British soldiers. Besides, all avenues of the promotion were close to them as all the higher posts were reserved for the British. Fourth one is immediate cause. The soldier in the army were given and field rifles. Cartridges of these rifles were covered with the greased paper cover. This greased cover had to be bitten off before the cartridge could be loaded into the rifle. The news spread that the grease was made up of cow and pig fat. As Hindus considered the cow sacred and the Muslim do not eat pig's meat. Both the communities were an raged on this account. The first soldier to protest against the using grease cartridges was Mangal Pandey. He refused to use the cartridge and was hanged for it. This incident sparked off a journal revolt which started from Meerut. On 10th May 1857, the rebel soldiers at Meerut killed their British officers, released the imprisoned comrades and hoisted the flag of revolt. The soldiers then set off for Delhi where they were joined the local infantry. The rebels seized Delhi and declared the Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar as the Emperor of India. Result of the revolt The result of the revolt were the following. The revolt was ruthlessly suppressed by the British. 
Bahadur Shah Zafar was kept in exile in Rangoon where he died in 1862. The Parliament of the United Kingdom withdrew the rights of the British East India Company to rule in India in November 1858. The United Kingdom started ruling India directly through the Governor General. So children, it's time for tits and bets. After defeating the mutineers, the British exile Bahadur Shah Zafar to Burma, now Myanmar, he spent the last five years of his life in Rangoon, now Yangon, with his death in 1862. Three centuries of Mughal rule came to an end. Causes of the failure of the revolt The Great Revolt of 1857 failed due to the given causes. Lack of unity and cohesion Many straight rulers like the Sindhyas, Holkas, Nawab of Bhopal, Rajas of Patiala, Nabha, Jind and Jodhpur big zamindars and traders actively supported the British. The Sikh, Rajput and Goraka battalions remained loyal to the British to suppress this revolt. The rising was not widespread. It was limited to UP, Delhi and West Bengal. It did not assume a national character. West India remained quite silent. Weak leadership was an important cause of the revolt's failure. Most of its leaders lacked a national perspective and were motivated by narrow personal gains. So now children, it's time for looking back. Vasco da Gama was the first navigator to visit India to secure a trading post here. After Vasco da Gama visit, other European countries like France, Holland and England became eager to establish trade centers in India. Finally, the British East India Company was established in India and started its trade from Surat. The Battle of Plassey was fought between British East India Company and Sirajul Dola. The British won the battle under Clive and laid the foundation of British Raj in India. And the last one is eventually the Great Revolt of 1857 broke out but was ruthlessly suppressed by the British. So children, it's time to take your leave. We'll meet in the next class. Bye.